so dear students let me finally come to the last topic of our astronomy and astrophysics course that is the doppler effect already we have used the doppler effect in explaining the stellar spectra in another module even then for the sake of completeness of our syllabus let me uh, once again go through the topic of doppler effect and there is nothing new that i have to tell and this session is meant for those who still have some doubts on how doppler effect is being used in astrophysics for measuring the velocities or stellar recession velocities or recession velocities of the galaxies and hence it becomes an experimental proof for the expanding theory of the universe as you know doppler effect is a wave phenomenon shown by both sound waves as well as electromagnetic waves such as light the doppler effect produced by sound waves have been learned in connection with the change in the frequency observed in the case of or uh, experienced in the case of the train whistle problems etc in your maybe plus one classes now doppler effect being a wave phenomenon is equally shown by electromagnetic old electromagnetic waves including visible light it's not only really limited to the region of visible light remember whenever there is an apparent change in the frequency of light due to the relative motion between the source of light or source of electromagnetic waves and the observer we say that there exists or there occurs what is known as doppler effect so first and foremost thing that you have to keep in mind while talking about doppler effect is that it's a wave phenomenon shown or it's applicable for both sound waves means transversal waves like uh, uh, okay uh, electromagnetic waves and uh, longitudinal waves like uh, sound waves and uh, whenever we say doppler effect in light what we mean actually is doppler effect applicable for electromagnetic waves and so we have the definition here which i think none of you uh, will forget the phenomenon of apparent change what are, are the key words in the definition i have made it red the phenomenon of apparent change means the change that appears to happen in the frequency or in the wavelength of light emitted by a source due to the relative motion between the source and the observer so there are the two key words are apparent change and the other one is what relative motion so it, it's not a must that uh, there uh, should happen doppler effect when both the source and uh, uh, observer are moving so there won't be any doppler effect in multiple cases for example suppose that this is the source of light and this is the observer if both the source of light and the observer are moving in the same direction with the same velocity so let me say that this is velocity of the source and this is uh, okay velocity of the uh, you can see that uh, observer so if uh, both the source and the observer are moving in the same direction okay uh, you can see that uh, okay with the same velocity means same speed then there may not be any doppler effect the same manner you can see that if the uh, see if, uh, if the direction of motion of uh, the observer is perpendicular to the direction of in which what the light is uh, emitted then also means if the velocities of source and observer are perpendicular then also there won't be any doppler effect usually okay so uh, such cases uh, to be taken care of that is why we are taking that there should be some sort of what is known as relative motion now really that is what is made clear in uh, further points that relative motion along the line of sight is relevant along the right line of sight is relevant means okay you can see that uh, uh, see uh, the observer is here this is the observer and this is the source so along the line of sight means uh, this is okay the motion along the velocity along the line of sight uh, means along the radial direction either towards the observer or away from the observer hope you remember i had mentioned that uh, a star in general may be having 
uh, see uh, its uh, velocity uh, if we are observing from earth from a particular site say from here maybe the star is uh, moving in a, a random direction say that it's moving in this direction so its velocity will be along that direction so this is a velocity vector now this velocity vector for an observer uh, who is looking from uh, okay say that from this uh, point along this line uh, see this velocity vector can be split up into two components so one component along the radial direction okay from the observer so this is the observer here uh, this is a star here one along the radial direction this is known as the radial component of the velocity and one will be along the what you call okay perpendicular or tangential direction so this is a tangential velocity of the star remember in Doppler effect phenomenon only the radial velocity the radial velocity of the star either away from the observer or towards the observer it can be both the ways only the radial component of the velocity okay that is the radial component of the motion between the source and the observer is relevant in uh, making what is all in, in the okay, happening of Doppler effect right so it means that if if a star is moving just along the tangent okay like this either it is moving like this or like this then uh, we won't be able to uh, just observe any Doppler effect from the light that is emitted by the thing so the Doppler effect is used to measure only the radial velocity of the heavenly bodies that is what I want to stress upon the Doppler effect is used to measure only the radial velocity of either uh, coming towards something or uh, moving away and you know in the case of galaxies and distant stars we, stars, we are able to observe only uh, okay, a recessional velocity right uh, as uh, what we are going to discuss now so the apparent frequency the general theory of Doppler effect says that confirms that the apparent frequency the frequency that is received by us increases as the source or observer are approaching each other so if the source this is the source and this is the observer say and if the source and observer are due to any reason if they are approaching each other means the distance between the two are going on decreasing then it is found that the uh, obs the observed or the apparent frequency will be greater than it will be increasing or it will be greater than the original frequency okay a new dash is the apparent frequency now if uh, they are just uh, receding if okay they are receding uh, receding in the sense that maybe one is receding or both are moving each from away from each other okay so in those cases it is found that the frequency apparent frequency is less than what the original frequency right and you can tell just the reverse about the corresponding uh, wavelengths and that is what is shown in the uh, okay associated diagram over here you can see here uh, suppose that this is a galaxy so this is a galaxy uh, here you have got a galaxy here see if uh, and uh, see one observer is here say one observer is here this is observer one and one observer is here say that this is observer two and uh, say okay on two different uh, parts of the galaxy uh, two, two different directions from the galaxy uh, uh, see uh, of course okay uh, you know we are uh, you know, when we are on the earth we are on the same side as far as any uh, distant galaxy is concerned but uh, i'm taking that too. if the observer if there is a, any observer on one side here and if the galaxy is just moving towards the right as the arrow indicates then we'll see that uh, the waves the waves originated by the okay, originated from the galaxy reaching the observer O2 is getting crowded you know the, okay, you, know, you know that if waves are drawn very close to each other then you know that this means a high frequency thing uh, from CRO measurements I still uh, hope that still you remember that uh, high frequency is shown as crowded because okay the time period is less you know okay from here to here uh, the distance between the two uh, see uh, uh, crust or trough denotes the time period and it is frequency is one by time period in the notations okay so uh, like uh, so this is here you can see that frequency appears to be increased now if uh, an observer O1 is on the other side and uh, you know with respect to observer O1 in the diagram the galaxy is actually receding 
so the galaxy is receding away so you can see that the wavelength appears to be okay or uh, you can see uh, the frequency okay in terms of frequency the frequency appears to be what okay decreased the frequencies was appearing to be decreased so new dash decreases if there is a recession and new dash increases if there is a uh, what is the now approaching okay uh, so that is the thing and you can see that in the case of approaching okay uh, we have represented in the diagram the waves by blue color the blue color here it is an indicative thing okay so blue color denotes what uh, actually greater frequency or lesser wavelength and uh, here you can see that uh, you know, the red color is uh, used to denote the receding thing so the red color here red color is just an indication uh, it doesn't mean that it becomes red no Okay, red color just indicates that the wavelength increases or the frequency decreases because in the uh, okay vibgior spectrum in the reference spectrum which is what vibgior spectrum violet is having you know low wavelength and red is having large wavelength so this is what lambda max this is lambda max and this is what lambda minimum or this is what uh, frequency uh, so you know lambda and frequency are inversely proportional this is what uh, new minimum and this is what uh, sorry uh, this is new maximum new maximum and uh, this red is what new minimum so you can see that if the frequency decreases then it becomes what reddish okay means towards the okay redder end of the visible spectrum that is only meaning okay that never it means that it will become reddish that is a wrong concept okay only if visible light is emitted and if the uh, thing is uh, happening then it becomes uh, red shifted red shifted doesn't mean that it becomes completely red it just means that it is shifting towards the okay what you say that uh, lower frequency or higher wavelength a lower frequency region is uh, represented by the red color that's all okay so that's the uh, first and foremost thing that we have to see and the same thing you know the entire spectrum of the source will be shifted towards the it's not a single line the entire spectrum obtained from the source will be uh, shifted towards violet violet or in general we can say blue because uh, blue is uh, more uh, just popular okay i'll see even though it's vibgior the blue is more a more popular color so violet in the case of an approaching source causing what is known as blue shift even that is uh, towards the violet we say we call it as by the name blue shift and if the entire spectrum of the source is shifted appears to be shifted towards the red end means the higher wavelength region then uh, okay in the it happens in the case of the receding source then it is causing what is known as what red shift so the red shift and blue shift are the two extreme cases of doppler effect okay so one is an uh, apparent increase in the frequency that is known as the blue shift and the apparent decrease in the frequency is what is known as what the red shift so just remember the okay wavelength or frequency relationship of blue and red in the bimgeo that would be enough so we can see that uh, uh, here on the right side we have i have just taken a diagram to make you clear see uh, the middle diagram is your reference reference okay spectrum this is the reference spectrum everything in spectroscopy is uh, just um, discussed with respect to some reference standard spectrum uh, usually known as some uh, see standard spectrum or some uh, okay or the laboratory spectrum okay it just like i told you uh, because the spectra are compared with the fingerprints of culprits in the database of uh, maybe the okay uh, police force right and you know whenever you have to identify something somebody's fingerprint okay uh, what you do is that you just uh, okay match the selected fingerprint which uh, the database having a lot of what uh, okay standard fingerprints of uh, you know okay notorious criminals okay and if one shows a great match then we'll say that this is that of the thing so it's the same technique that is being used in spectroscopy throughout we always compare the observed spectrum the unknown spectrum observed from a distant galaxy with a standard spectrum okay and that standard spectrum is known as the laboratory spectrum right and the laboratory spectrum uh, okay from a stationary source stationary source is shown uh, okay at the middle here in my diagram 
right and you can see some characteristic uh, continuous background and there are some dark front of our lines there superimposed on that so the dark lines are showing the absorption lines and the background lines are showing what the continuous spectra right so this is a reference spectrum and you can note the two lines that you see two absorption lines uh, here right so let me you can take any of this line so let me uh, look at uh, focus on this lines and you see that in the top okay spectrum you can see that uh, can you see this line has been shifted here this line has been shifted here earlier this line was this double line the doublet was here in the yellow region it is shifted here okay similarly this particular line in the reference spectrum has been shifted here so you can see that there is a shift for every line so this line is this one here these uh, two lines have been shifted somewhere here okay and this particular line has been shifted to this one so can you see that the entire spectrum or the spectrum as a whole the central spectrum as a whole has been shifted towards the left side together together that is that is why it's told that now in doppler effect it is not only one or two lines usually it is the entire spectrum which will be showing a shift towards either the okay what you say that uh, lower wavelength side or high frequency side calling it as what blue shift and you can see that uh, see this line uh, all these lines have been shifted to the left and uh, to the left uh, it means that uh, you have got the violet end of the uh, spectrum remember uh, here uh, for clarity we have uh, shown visible light it can be any other electromagnetic wave as well you need not be okay you need not be see it can be a gamma ray uh, emitter and the the observed gamma ray spectrum will be also shifted to what the low frequency or the high frequency depending on what okay uh, the recession or what approaching so there is a meaning so since it is shifted towards the low frequency region we call it as what uh, sorry high frequency region we call it as what the um, okay what you call the blue shift and the blue shift you know it happens when the source is moving towards us okay so that is approaching and when the source is receding you can see that the red shift what is the red shift that is shown by here so this is the red shift the bottom one you can see that whatever reference lines we are taken the line see the doublet here yellow doublet here that is shifted towards the right this particular line here is also shifted towards the right or you can see that the entire line whatever line is there that is also shifted towards the right so the spectrum as a whole has been shifted towards the right and right means you know it is the redder end or known as what red shift okay now the amount of how much this shift will occur means the amount of this shift depends on the radial velocity as i have been mentioning only the radial velocity of the source or the observer is relevant here the radial velocity of the source and the frequency being observed as so this is the relationship okay this is a relationship delta lambda by lambda is equal to plus or minus vr by c okay there will be a plus or minus in textbooks i have just omitted okay and this equation where delta lambda is a change in wavelength or shift in wavelength that shift in wavelength is known as delta lambda okay and corresponding to delta lambda there will be a delta nu also there will be a corresponding shift in what frequency related by nu is equal to c by lambda or c is equal to nu lambda you can just take that okay so they will be related by the c so lambda is the natural wavelength or the original wavelength in this expression vr is the radial velocity we are positive means the source is receding from the observer and we are is negative means the uh, source is what okay uh, approaching the observer and remember this equation is usually used and this equation is derived we need not derive this equation okay we take that equation for granted and this equation has been derived for a non relativistic case now after studying relativity in your classical mechanics classes i think you very well understand why non relativity case means if the velocity of recession of the galaxy okay that is vr is pretty small compared to the velocity of light in vacuum we call that one as what the non relativistic case okay and in the relativistic cases there will be a slight difference in the equation to be used there is a modification in the equation to be used and that is shown by this expression for the relativistic case that is what is the meaning that is if the velocity of recession is comparable with the velocity of light in vacuum then instead of the earlier equation you have to use this particular equation to calculate the or relate to the uh, doppler shift so here it is 1 plus 
डेल्टा लामडा बाय लामडा इज इक्वल टू रूट ऑफ 1 प्लस वी आर बाय सी डिवाइडेड बाय 1 माइनस वी आर बाय सी एंड इट इज वेरी इन द रेयरेस्ट ऑफ द रेयर केसेस वी विल हैव टू यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग एस्पेशली व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट व्हाट द डॉपलर शिफ्ट इन गामा रे रीजन एंड ऑल वी बी यूजली यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर ओके रिलेटिविस्टिक केस ओके इन ऑल अदर केसेस रिमेंबर वी विल बी यूजिंग द नॉन रिलेटिविस्टिक एक्सप्रेशन व्हिच इज नथिंग बट सिंपली डेल्टा लामडा इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल इक्वेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी यूज्ड दिस इक्वेशन टू डू द प्रॉब्लम इन अ प्रीवियस क्लास ओके आई होप यू आर स्टिल रिमेंबर डेल्टा लामडा बाय लामडा इज इक्वल टू सिंपली वी आर बाय सी okay so see that you practice doing it. where what is delta lambda delta lambda is okay defined as lambda dash minus lambda remember lambda dash is the observed observed or apparent observed lambda means this is what is known as the apparent and lambda is the original this is the original wavelength of the light emitted by the source original lambda okay or natural wavelength so it is like now what is this delta lambda i told you that okay now see if this is the uh, reference this is the reference spectrum okay and this is the reference line and you can see in the top diagram okay which shows that this is a blue shift you can see because the reference line has been from here it has been shifted to here okay from this position it has been shifted to here so how much it has shifted how much it has shifted from the original position so this particular distance or this particular wavelength by how much okay it can be calculated in spectroscopy and this is known as what delta lambda because corresponding to every position there will be a wavelength position that is mentioned and uh, in the red shift case what is shown in the bottom where there is a recession of uh, galaxies there which is actually observed experimentally you can see that uh, uh, the reference line which is uh, shown here has been now shifted towards the right side so it was earlier here so entire spectrum is shifted that is why this line also is appearing here so this much how much it has been shifted this is what is known as what delta lambda okay and uh, there will be a scale that is used uh, in all the measurements you can you uh, th that those scales are used uh, okay in uh, spectroscopic uh, devices just like what you are using spectrometer uh, there will be corresponding angles and these angles can be just uh, interpreted in terms of what the corresponding wavelength shift okay using devices so that is what is usually done so that is the relativistic and non relativistic case. just focus on the relativistic case and uh, understand that there can be some non relativistic case also where there will be a change in the related equation okay now the same concept uh, okay uh, is represented here i think that this diagram is not uh, so relevant now because i have already shown how it appears in the original spectrum uh, this one was an earlier adopted diagram so uh, what i want to tell is that it is always by comparing with a laboratory lamp spectrum the standard lines in the laboratory lamp spectrum that we are able to understand how much is the doppler shift you can see that the delta lambda has been just compared okay so that is the thing now uh, yes uh, see i think uh, you, you still remember i had used these two diagrams in our earlier module to explain how uh, see on one side uh, crowding okay occurs and on the other side what uh, just uh, what is that uh, see apparently the wave fronts are uh, distant okay how lambda dash uh, decreases or how lambda dash increases in the case of uh, okay the two type of ships the same diagram also i have shown here whatever we have seen here you can see that uh, this is uh, same diagram i have taken some reference diagram from internet uh, so that you can just uh, understand the concept this is what i want to tell you uh, that a doppler shift uh, there are a lot of uh, misunderstanding i have heard uh, students in yva when we even ask the pg students what actually is red dash shift and blue shift many of them have found to answer that it is becoming becoming red it's not becoming red okay uh, so it's a mistake it's not becoming red okay it is either shifting towards red okay or towards blue okay which just denotes only a uh, comparative uh, way of telling whether the frequency is increasing or the frequency is decreasing never say that it is becoming red okay and uh, mostly that's a common mistake i want you to get rid of that uh, grave mistake okay uh, in the double effect concept okay so that's good so maybe okay here earth is shown here in this diagram all these diagrams will make the concepts clear okay and uh, here some galaxy distant galaxy is shown here so this is a source and this is the observer right and uh, as if you are observing and you can see that uh, uh, the uh, just uh, uh, topmost diagram here this is the uh, if the galaxy is at rest if the galaxy was if the source was at rest okay then the standard spectrum is shown here okay 
uh, unlike the other diagrams what I have used, uh, the central one was the reference one for the corresponding rust case. But in this diagram, uh, you can clearly very well understand that you can see because the uh, the frequency on the right side. Okay, so actually it is from here to here the light is being emitted, and we receive it here. Okay, so we are receiving it from on the earth. You can see that? Can you see that uh, there is no difference between the uh, okay the frequencies and all like okay so it's same now you can see in the uh, second diagram where you know, there is an arrow shown here if the galaxies are receding the galaxies are receding you can see that this reference line what you see here has been uh, shifted towards the right side okay so it is towards the right side so this is what we call as what the red shift okay and uh, towards the in the other case you can see when the galaxy is just moving uh, towards the observer towards the earth as it is shown by the arrow here you can see our reference line in the top diagram has been shifted towards the left side and left side means what uh, lower wavelength side or higher frequency side okay and uh, that denotes what is known as what the blue shift blue shift here right and you know uh, so far okay we have been obtaining only red shift we have been obtaining only doppler red shift from okay all the gal distant galaxies and never we get a single okay z verified single verified uh, doppler blue shift from distant galaxies which uh, okay uh, says that uh, all the galaxies are moving away from each other as a part of uh, the universal expansion and uh, we have seen uh, while discussing the expanding theory of the universe that the doppler red shift still remains one of the remarkable okay remarkable experimental support or experimental proof for the what you call uh, the uh, dop, uh, the expanding theory of the universe and uh, big bang theory as a whole so that's i think that's enough uh, as okay, uh, okay about doppler effect remember the astrophysical relevance of doppler effect is that it helps us to measure the radial velocities of stars radial velocity of stars okay can be measured second one it uh, gives uh, answers to uh, several questions regarding the origin of the universe okay origin of universe that is the expanding theory of the universe. big bang etc are supported okay so these are the uh, strong uh, points that is uh, to be remembered regarding the doppler effect in astronomy and astrophysics okay so that's about it i think uh, it be worthwhile uh, to complete our session with one sample problem at least and i have added an assignment okay assignment number four uh, with uh, okay questions and uh, some sample problems uh, from basic physics module please just uh, complete that uh, by due date and uh, submit it in the google classroom and uh, see let's uh, attempt this problem is straight away in the spectrum of a distant galaxy the lines observed are doppler shifted by 20 percent so remember sometimes data may be given in terms of percentage towards the longer wavelength we expect that because you know towards the longer wavelength means it's towards the red side okay means it is telling that it is red shifted uh, calculate its radial velocity so what you have to calculate you know what are things are given okay what you have to calculate all those things. so it is given that uh, the lines are doppler shifted by 20 percent okay so you know it's uh, delta lambda is not uh, delta lambda is the shift in wavelength is not that is equal to lambda dash minus lambda so it is given that it is Doppler shifted by 20%. By 20% means what? With respect to the original. So 20% Doppler shift is a very large shift. Okay. Uh, see. Uh, so 20% means with respect to the original. So what is given here is delta lambda percentage of Doppler shift is given. That's why I have taken up this problem. Delta lambda by lambda. Lambda is the original wavelength. So shift in wavelength by original wavelength is given to be equal to 20%. What is my 20%? You know, 20% means what? 20% per, per century. So, you know, that is what? Nothing but what? 0 0.2. So, what the data given here is delta lambda, lambda by lambda is directly given to be equal to 0 0.2. And so, it is quite easy for us. So, what you have to calculate is what? The uh, radial velocity. And so, the question is what is radial velocity? We are. And it's not quite simple. We, are, we can consider the non-relativistic case. So by the non-relativistic equation for Doppler shift, we have got delta lambda by lambda directly is equal to Vr by C. So 
uh, you have to calculate VR so it's just a mere uh, okay change so VR will be equal to simply Delta lambda by lambda into C C is the velocity of light in vacuum so that will be equal to some point 0.2 into right C is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so it's quite simple it will become 3 into 2 is 6 so power is uh, reduced by 1 so 6 into 10 is 7 meter per second and you can see that um, see the uh, okay um, the galaxy is uh, receding away from uh, the observer okay uh, by uh, something uh, large velocity of the order of 6 into 10 is 7 meter per second so this is the radial velocity Okay, remember this is the radial component of the velocity. Maybe the actual velocity can be greater than this radial velocity. As I told you, radial velocity is only one of the components okay, that uh, we are able to just uh, perceive using Doppler effect. So that gives you an idea about the Doppler effect calculation. In uh, any other uh, okay, calculation, maybe you are given or the lambda, the original wavelength can be given, and the, uh, the okay, uh, you maybe uh, you are uh, given the uh, the velocity the radial velocity is given you may be asked to calculate either delta lambda if you are asked to calculate doppler shift then you have to calculate delta lambda if you have to calculate the new wavelength or apparent wavelength you have to calculate lambda dash or you have to calculate maybe okay the other way you will be asked to calculate lambda as well so depending on uh, whatever you are asked to calculate and depending on the nature of the problem see that you work out the problem in the real sense okay so practice several problems and uh, complete all other assignments uh, in the due date so uh, happy that uh, you know see uh, i think we have done um, uh, justice to the syllabus and i was just uh, trying to give you an overview of uh, uh, this new branch of uh, physics which uh, i know many of you would have uh, okay, been uh, okay see uh, trying to dreaming to learn about from your lower classes so actually it's a very interesting subject uh, try uh, i don't know to what extent i was able to communicate the beauty of the subject anyway understand that basically okay uh, the uh, basic knowledge of physics is an essential component in understanding what astronomy and astrophysics and other things uh, just becomes what uh, at your own hands okay so thank you we will be having some live sessions later so we'll communicate if there exists any problem for you if there is any difficulty we'll address that difficulty in the live sessions okay uh, thank you for spending uh, okay, uh, the course, uh, the time together in this course. Okay. Thank you.